not the least. But if you, if I'm saying, you, you could sit there yourself. What the heck was that? Yeah. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. Here we go, guys. All right. Please stand. Please stand as we sing together number 388. God has chosen me. Number 388. God has chosen me. God has chosen me. To bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me. God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. chosen me, God has chosen me, to set a light on new fire. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you all. Well, despite the ups and downs of the weather, we thought we were going to be outside, but we're inside, and I hope you can hear us outside anyway. Um, everybody is welcome, especially those who today will be receiving the sacrament of the anointing of the sick after Mass. Other people who are welcome are probably millions of people who are not here. And the readings will tell us a little bit about those other millions of people whom we don't know might be on God's side. So let's begin looking to our own situation, our own hearts, and just asking that the mercy of God renew us, reform us, open us. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you come to us this morning in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, and may Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. You, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on 
us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We pray it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated then as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the Spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also and they prophesied in the camp. So, when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. And that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Behold the wages you withhold from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. And he offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. to be your disciples to bring all the world to the joy of your kingdom From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his or her reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
at the, um, at the height of the American Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was invited to address a large gathering of Union forces who were rallying in support of the war. And the MC, the Master of Ceremonies, who introduced the president, asked him to come forward and to lead the assembly in prayer that God might be on the Union side and help win the war. And Lincoln came up to the podium, and the first thing he said was, I'm not really concerned about whether God is on our side. I am very concerned whether we are on God's side. Very concerned whether we are on God's side. We all want to be on God's side. But how do we be on God's side? What does it mean? Well, today's readings, I think, reveal two really important truths about that. The first one is this, and this hurts, because we don't like it this way. The first one is that God's side is always bigger than our side. Sorry, guys. God's side is always bigger than our side. In the first reading, Joshua, he's jealous of those two guys who were prophesying without having been there at sort of the graduation ceremony. And he was, you know, Moses, my Lord, stop them. And then in the Gospel, John, he's bent out of shape because he saw someone successfully driving out demons in, in Jesus' name. And he tried to stop him. He does not follow us. We spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of time making decisions that separate the good from the bad. People whom we trust from those whom we don't trust. Those with whom we identify with and those whom we push away. Making such decisions are necessary. I mean, we live in a dangerous world. It's complicated. We have to make decisions for the good of our, our families, our, our country. But once we've made those decisions, whom we deem as good and we can trust, once we've made that, then the believer in Christ always has to admit that the group that God draws together, the good and the worthy that God's drawing, is larger, is larger than our group. God sees a goodness that we often do not perceive. God sees possibilities that we can't imagine. And that's, that's why God is God. And we must be very cautious about pretending to know who is on God's side. Both Moses and Jesus, they knew better. They knew that God's power cannot be limited only to those who we think are worthy. And Moses and Jesus realize that there are more people on God's side than we are able to see. God's side is bigger than our side. And this kind of leads us then maybe to a second point from today's readings, that standing on God's side, it ain't easy. Making room for God's bigger vision is really difficult because it means that we commit ourselves to listen to others. Others that we believe might be wrong. Just in case, they might be on God's side. And it means that we must accept those who are different from us and difficult for us just in case they might carry a truth 
that we can't see yet. And it means that we must love our enemies because only if we do that, we might discover some kind of common ground by which God intends to build up his kingdom. But we can't see it yet. It's difficult to stand on God's side because we will look foolish. We will look foolish to all those who are so sure that they are right. And we'll be ridiculed by those who have no other interest but to circle the wagons and protect those who they deem worthy. Standing on God's side is difficult. And that's perhaps why Jesus used such violent images, language, in, in the end of that gospel. Because letting go of the security that we hold the complete truth, that we have it, that can be as difficult as cutting off your hand and pushing away stereotypes, prejudices, false fears that tag another as the enemy. That can be as painful as cutting off your foot and resisting that primal impulse to, to return violence for violence, that can be as unthinkable as, as plucking out your eye. But if we want to stand with God, really stand with God, that's, that's the price we pay. It was interesting, I was reading something on the last night of the uh, Eucharistic Congress that was in July in uh, Indianapolis. And the very last night, one of the speakers happened to say, no matter who is in the White House, the governor's house, the mayor's house, Jesus Christ is always on the throne. We must obey God rather than men and women. Those who follow Christ must be humble and courageous. Humble to know that God's vision is always bigger than our vision. Always. And courageous to make room for that vision, even if we seem foolish, naive. Jesus calls us to believe in God's kingdom and to be agents to bring on its dawning. People who can speak words of understanding, of comfort. It is difficult to stand on God's side. Perhaps that's why there are so many people who prefer to proclaim to the housetops, God stands with us rather than to humbly and courageously ask, do we stand with God? So shall we stand and profess the faith that's been passed on to us? We'll pray the, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so let us pray then for the church that we may welcome the gift of the Spirit and be transformed by the Spirit's work in us so that God's mercy and compassion may be manifest in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the church and a renewed sense of mission that each of us use our own unique gifts and opportunities to share God's love through words or deeds, hospitality, even cups of water. We pray to the Lord. For a new understanding of money, that God will help us to recognize money as a means to fulfill our responsibilities rather than as an end in itself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That stumbling blocks placed in the path toward peace and especially in the Holy Lands and Ukraine may give way before a mutual trust and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those impacted by the hurricane and the storms in Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas, and for all those trying to respond to their needs and their suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all children particularly those who lack food, homes, and health care, that God will guide us in providing for these little ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for all the sick, you yourself if you're not well, people you know. We pray in a special way for those who this morning will receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. We pray for Lisa, Egidio Recivedi, for Kim, that God will renew the gift of life within them and restore them to active health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray, as always, for our dearly departed. Today, in a special way, we remember Virginia Nardozzi, Anna, Maria and Giuseppe Foti, Father Raymond Schmidt. The Mass is offered for Emil and Alma Marquis and for Annunziata de Sosa. That God would welcome them into the everlasting arms of his merciful love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for the family and the friends of the Ozog and we also pray for somebody special back there who's celebrating a birthday this week for Courtney and then in silence for the things, the people that are closest to your heart this morning we pray to the Lord Lord, oh God our Savior help us to follow the light and live the truth. In you we have been born again as daughters and sons of light. May we be your witnesses before all the world. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone.
into your hearts. Let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim in song the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, 
spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our Bishop, all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the full coming of God's kingdom on earth where we expect it and where only God knows it might come. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share some little sign of that peace. peace. Do, do you think you could find somebody to take my place? Yeah, okay, we are already oh, you said to the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life.
for the reception of Holy Communion. If you just be patient and be seated, we'll come kind of section by section, and somebody will definitely come outside too for everybody out there. Okay, so that's how we'll do it. Our first communion song is number 441 on Eagle's Wings, number 441.
There was a child named Bernadette I heard the story long ago She saw the queen of heaven once And kept the vision in her soul You know, I forgot to mention, uh, today, September 29th, is the Gold Star Mother's Family Day. And it's a day to honor the families of fallen service men and women lost defending, protecting our country. So just to keep them and all their families in, in mind, too. Oh, God, beyond all human boundaries, your deeds of power take place and your healing mercy is at work. Ours is not to restrict the wonders of your saving grace, but to give joyful thanks for your compassion wherever we may find it. Teach us to use well the riches of nature and grace, to share generously for those in need, 
and to look carefully to our own conduct. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we have a bunch of announcements. Um, I hope you're enjoying this partly sunny Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's what my weather app told me. <laughs> anyway, um, our three o'clock prayer will be here in the chapel. Immediately after mass, we're having the anointing of the sick. So those of you who want to be anointed, just stay. Um, you can sit towards the front on either side or in over here. Um, those of you who want to have a conversation, all of you chatty Cathy's and chatty Ken's, take it outside or go over to, the, go over to Pilgrim Hall, okay? Um, but everybody who wants to be anointed, just stay here. We're, we'll celebrate immediately after Mass. Um, at 1.30, we will have a session on Terra Divina, our new meditation walks here at the Shrine. Um, not sure what the weather's going to be like, but... Uh, we're going to begin up at Monford House to do an introduction. And depending upon the weather, you can either decide to do one of the walks or to come back another day and do one of the walks. So that's at 1.30 up at Monford House. There's still a few, few more slots open. So if somebody wants to come and hasn't signed up, that's fine. Also, be sure to go over to Pilgrim Hall and see our exhibit icons on ammo boxes. This is something two uh, artists from the Ukraine went to the front lines of the war and brought back uh, used ammunition boxes and decided to turn them into um, icons. They painted icons on the panels. Um, they're truly beautiful, so go over there and see that any donation that you, li that you leave over there will go directly to helping uh, a mobile hospital to care for those who have been injured in the war. So take a look at that in Pilgrim Hall. This coming Saturday, it's close to the Feast of St. Francis, and we'll have the Blessing of Animals at 4 o'clock at the Grotto. So this Saturday, 4 o'clock, bring your cats, dogs, turtles, aardvarks, any other pets that you might have. Um, October 13th is our harvest dinner. That's the last Sunday we're going to be outside. Um, the harvest dinner will be in Pilgrim Hall. There are still tickets available. You can purchase them either at the cafe or at the uh, gift shop. Uh, soon after that will be our tag sale uh, the, towards the end of October. October 21st and 22nd is when you can drop off treasures that you no longer want in your house. And then on October 24th to 27th, you can come back and buy new treasures <laughs> and bring them home. Also, if you haven't uh, signed up to be a friend of the Shrine, there are uh, brochures in Pilgrim Hall. It's a way to put, um, put the Shrine on a more stable financial uh, foundation. So if you haven't, uh, think about doing that. If you have, pick up an extra one and try to convince a friend of yours to be a friend of the shrine. And last but not least, the specials at the cafe today are stuffed cabbage, New England clam chowder, kale and white bean soup, and for dessert, peach pie, pumpkin pie, cherry cheesecake, blueberry cheesecake, and lots of other good things. So feel free to stop by there. Shall we rise? And uh, I, I would just like to thank, uh, you know, I've been away for two weeks with Father Tom Poth in Colombia, visiting our seminarians, our Montfort young fathers from all around Latin America. And it was a wonderful time to see the energy, the enthusiasm. But thank you for your prayers that we went and had a good time and were safe in everything. So thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is number 566. Lift up your hearts. Number 566.
sing. Praise the glory of